there's something more deadlier than sharks in the waters of Florida. And as of recently, it's already taken eight lives. Today, we're going to talk about it. I need to get back to shore. Did you know that the state of Florida had 1,350 miles of coastline? We have 47 miles here in Palm Beach County alone. And today, I'm standing on one of those coastlines. I'm at the beach here in Gulfstream, at Gulfstream Park Beach. Basically, we're right in between Delray Beach and Boynton Beach. I've done a few videos here, and this is one of my favorite beaches to come to. It's got some nice facilities, it's a great beach, and of course, there's lifeguards on it. So every day, millions of people go to the beach here in the state of Florida. There's just, you know, from the west coast and their white sandy beaches to the east coast in the Atlantic blue waters. People come out here and enjoy the beach on a daily basis. And for the most part, people go about their day and have a great day at the beach. They come out, they bring their family, whatever, maybe by themselves, read a book like I see people doing right now, out snorkeling, uh, out in the distance way back there. There's some people kayak fishing. I used to do that quite a bit. And it's just a really great thing to do. And well, it's why we live here in Florida. We love the ocean and we love our beaches. But there are things that can ruin your day. And even worse, there's some things that tragically can kill you. So on today's video, we're gonna talk about some of the safety things that you need to know about before getting in the water here in the state of Florida. Now, I'm not a lifeguard, I'm not an expert on water safety, but I am gonna to talk to you about some things that I've learned over my 33 years of living here and what I've passed on to my kids and friends and my customers who moved to the state of Florida about being safe when you're going out and spending a day at the beach. So, let's get started. Now, as you can see, it is very sunny, blue skies, and the UV rays are pretty high today. So, one of the first things you obviously need to make sure that you do to protect yourself is protect your skin. Skin cancer is uh, it's, its no fun, right? And it kills a lot of people every year. So you want to make sure that you protect yourself, wear the proper clothing, and get a good sunscreen with a high SPF protection on it. Now, I know we all want to have that nice summer suntan. Tanning my whole life, going to the beach, tanning salons, and so forth. And, and I get that. But trust me, as you get older, <laughs> like I have, you may start to regret not protecting your skin like I didn't when I was a kid. And there's no way to ruin a vacation or a weekend quicker than getting yourself fried at the beach. And sit out in the sun for even an hour, even 30 minutes, and you can have yourself a good burn if you're not used to the Florida sun. Because it is very intense in the summer. The UV rays are very high, and uh, today's like in the high 90s. So you definitely want to protect yourself everywhere. Think about, the, you know, put that lotion everywhere you can. Um, even do it on, put it on before you come out to the beach so that you can protect yourself because, you know, when you're wearing a bathing suit, sometimes part of your skin that's normally covered is now going to be exposed to the sun and those spots on your lower back or your thigh or whatever that weren't protected and didn't have any suntan lotion, man, they can be like just as red as a tomato and they will hurt. So you want to make sure that you always protect yourself with some good lotion, uh, you know, a high SPF rating, a 30, a 50 even, and you'll still get a tan. There's a lot of sun here, but you wanna make sure that you keep yourself protected. Now, if it's not the sun, it's the things in the water, and sometimes even on the beach. And one way to really ruin your day, and well, just gonna be a real annoyance, and it is gonna hurt, is a jellyfish. Now, there's always jellyfish here in the waters. You just kinda of, gotta watch for it. Some days are worse than others because they come in with the tides. But, you know, jellyfish will leave a nice sting. Uh, I've been fortunate to not ever be stung by one in all my 33 years here. But my son has when he surfed, and, you know, you can see the welts on your back. And usually there's a first aid station here with a lifeguard, and uh, they'll take care of it. And it's going to hurt, uh, and for little kids, it's going to hurt a lot. But uh, it's definitely an annoyance, and it can ruin a perfectly good afternoon uh, when you get stung by one. Now, more dangerous than that, would be the man of wars now the portuguese man of wars are a whole different level of pain uh, they've actually been known to kill people usually younger people or elderly people and those with suppressed immune systems uh, that maybe have a really bad reaction to the, the poison but uh, portuguese man of wars will definitely ruin your day see my foot just got stung right now that might have been a jellyfish um, but uh, 
the Portuguese Man of Wars, they're no fun, man. They'll, they'll, you'll see them, they're blue, you'll see them. Don't touch them, don't poke them. Kids like to play with them when they're on the beach and you don't want to touch them. Uh, they have long tentacles that stretch very far, just like a jellyfish, um, but their sting is much, much worse and it will ruin your day. And uh, you'll probably find yourself quite possibly in the ER, depending on how much pain you can take and how severe your reaction is to it. So you just want to watch out for them. Let's see today, it's a nice clear day and you can probably see in the water. We're not seeing any wash up on shore. So it's pretty, probably a pretty good day and you don't have to worry about them. But on uh, other days, uh, you definitely can see them all over the beach and they're in the water and you just have to keep an eye. So, you know, watch out for the Portuguese man of wars. Like I said, it's highly unlikely that anyone will die from one, but there have been cases where people have bad reactions. So, I don't want to talk to this fisherman just to see if he caught anything. So he was out there fishing about 200 feet of water. So he caught some fish yesterday. He had a bonita on, but uh, I used to do that quite a bit. Go out there in my kayak and fish. It's a beautiful day for it. And it's a nice calm day for being out by yourself. I was asking him about that. He was with a guide all day yesterday. So but, uh, definitely another one of the fun things you can do out here in the water. All right, well, let's uh, continue talking about some of the things that aren't fun about the water here in Florida. Did you know that one of the scariest movies ever made, one that pretty much terrified my childhood, was made 49 years ago? Can you guess what that movie is? Dun, 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 dun. Yep, that's right. 49 years ago, Jaws premiered. And man, I remember watching that movie as a kid and I was in Texas and I didn't want to go anywhere near the water. Like that movie still to this day sends chills up my spine. And uh, well, it, it's, it is scary. Matter of fact, when I came here, I asked the lifeguard, uh, was there, you know, what's going on? Where are the safety areas? And uh, asked him anything out in the water. And he did say there were a couple of big sharks that happened to be cruising up along the shoreline here. So nothing too much. He didn't tell anyone that they had to get out of the water, but they are there, they're always there. And uh, the lifeguard was keeping an eye on it. So earlier this month, tragically, Two teenagers and a woman were attacked by sharks in the Florida Panhandle less than two hours apart. This morning, a stretch of Walton County, Florida beaches now closed after a shark attack left three swimmers injured. Um, the one person, the lady, unfortunately lost part of her arm, um, which is, you know, thank God they're alive. But, you know, that's tragic that now she's, you know, has no arm for the rest of her life. Thank God she's alive. But uh, more tragically than that was that they lost the life of a well-known surfer in Hawaii, right? So shark attacks do happen very infrequently, but they do happen. And unfortunately here in the state of Florida, there was two within, or three within two hours apart. So in 2023, the state of Florida had 16 unprovoked shark attacks. That is about 44% of the total that took place in the United States and 23% of the total shark attacks that took place in the world. Now, none of them were fatal, thank God, but that's a lot of people getting bit by sharks here in the state of Florida, and that was in 2023. And so far, I believe now we've had three in the year of 2024. Those bites were reported in Volusia, Brevard, St. Lucie, Miami-Dade, and even here in Palm Beach County. Now, a lot of those bites were up in New Smyrna Beach, which is a surfing destination. It's known for the surfing uh, capital of Florida, really, and it's also known as the bite shark capital of Florida because there's a lot of surfers, a lot of bait fish, and well, put the two to two together, and you're gonna have more bites than maybe other places like Palm Beach County. Now, as scary as that is, it is very rare for shark attacks. Um, it's just not that common. You're definitely more likely to get hit by a car or even struck by lightning. But you do need to take some precautions and some of the things you can do to prevent yourself from you know, getting bit by a shark um, are pretty simple. For one, don't go in the water in the very early morning and don't go in at the very late when the sun's going down. Why? Because those are typically the times when there's a lot of bait fish and where there's a lot of bait fish, there's gonna be sharks because they're gonna be feeding. So don't put yourself at the dinner table, so to say, with the shark, and that's one way to avoid it. Now there's some other things that you can do to avoid being uh, bitten by a shark. Don't wear uh, shiny objects, 
swim with um, you know swim with more people than just yourself because if you're by yourself then you are likely that you might be the only object out there the shark sees and it may think you're bait because remember they don't look at humans and go we're going to attack humans they look at you and think you're bait they're not sure most sharks will bite and let go but the problem is when it's a big bite and it bites you you know it could be deadly depending on where you get bit also there's certain areas of the water that you should avoid sharks like to hang near sandbars and drop-offs right so you know try to avoid those a lot of people hang on sandbars sandbars are a popular place for people to hang on many beaches but it's good you know good advice to stay away from them or like i said where the drop-offs are because that could be a place where sharks hang and then other things uh seem kind of like common sense don't go in the water if you've got like a wound and it's bleeding um and also ladies if it's that particular time of the month uh, they say that you might not want to go in the water as well again sharks can smell blood from a quarter of a mile away so remember they can smell very well in the water that's how they find their prey so if you have an open wound or like as I said that time of the month you want to avoid going into the water and lastly try not to splash around a lot I know that seems crazy kids are out in the water and splashing but splashing does attract the shark because they think it's bait fish in distress and don't bring your pets in the water because they may see the pets as a wounded animal and as they're splashing around and everything would be attracted you know, attractive to the shark so I know we all like to bring our pets to the beach but let's try to keep fluffy on the beach not in the water unless it's like in the shallow water again you just want to use some common sense and be safe when you're going out to the ocean and these are just some tips to you know hopefully make you have let you have a good day and not have your beach day ruined so typically there's less than 100 unprovoked shark attacks a year um, and then in this next category which I would call the moron category there were 22 provoked attacks in 2023 provoked attacks which include intentional or unintentional interactions like trying to feed or touch a shark folks don't try to feed a shark I mean really here's your sign I mean come on if you're out swimming in the water and you see a shark remain calm uh, but the idea that you're gonna go down and try to feed it man that's just another level of stupid I can't even imagine all right so the next one we're gonna talk about is a real killer and it's an invisible killer and this one has tragically taken quite a few lives here in the state of Florida alone just in the past few weeks. So we're gonna talk about rip currents. Three more people have died in rip currents in Florida, bringing the total to six in 48 hours. The latest happened Friday evening off Panama City Beach. The bodies of three Alabama men were found one by one. So rip currents, invisible killer. I mean, you can see a rip current if you know how to look for them, but most people don't. Even I've rarely seen one and I've lived here for 30 years, but that's because I don't always know how to spot them until I've done some research lately. Now I think I might. But sadly, rip currents have killed eight people in the state of Florida alone and countless others throughout the United States. And it is the invisible killer because most people are out swimming and enjoying their day in the water and they have no idea. And then all of a sudden they're in a rip current. Now this is not a rip tide. Rip tide is different. That's when there's tides running through. This is a rip current. And sadly, a lot of people fight them, which you're not supposed to do because they panic and they drown. So this is why I wanted to do this video for y'all today, because this is extremely important. And I know a lot of y'all come here on vacation and a lot of you are moving here. A lot of you have kids, but it doesn't matter what age, kids, adults, all people can tragically uh, drown in a rip current. So rip currents are narrow, fast moving channels of water that are typically found on the east and west coast of the United States and on the Great Lakes. Yeah, I didn't know that and you don't really notice them, but they're extremely dangerous. They can be moving as fast as eight miles per hour, faster than an Olympic swimmer. So again, I'm gonna emphasize this a lot here in the next few minutes. Do not try to swim against a rip current. You're gonna lose every time. I don't care how good of an athlete you are, how good a swimmer you are. You do not want to try and fight a rip current. Now, as I mentioned, tragically, we've already had some deaths here in South Florida and up parts of Florida from rip currents here and annually lifeguards will rescue thousands like thousands of people from rip currents all across the United States and tragically each year about 100 people do drown from them 
So um, it's not anything to play with. You know, I've gone to the beach for 33 years here, and I've been fortunate and don't believe that I've ever been caught in one. I've never felt one, uh, never gotten pulled out, at least not to my knowledge. I think I would have known if I had, and neither have uh, my kids, but that's because we've always, you know, made sure that they were aware, you know, keeping an eye on the little ones, and anytime we're in the water, being cautious about it, and not going out when it's, you know, like really bad waves and days when the rip currents are probably going to be more likely than on a day like today where it's pretty calm. So, but this is something that you definitely want to make sure you're aware of. You want to ask the lifeguard. You'll see signs if there's rip currents, it'll tell you. They'll have it posted. They'll also have flags posted if there's uh, rip currents going. And, you know, if it is, then you want to be safe about it and, you know, maybe not necessarily have to stay out of the water, but definitely take more precautions, especially with little kids on days like that. Now, as I said a few minutes ago, I've never really been able to notice one myself, but I'm going to be looking more now that I've been doing this research. And from my notes that I'm looking at, it says, how to identify a rip current? Well, you want to look for differences in the water color and rip currents may appear darker due to deeper water, but you'll also notice things like gaps in breaking waves and foam. As I said, it usually occurs on really wavy days and rip currents often occur in those areas. Also check for lines of foam and seaweed or debris that you see being pulled out to the ocean, right? Moving away from the beach very quickly. That's definitely a rip current. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get in the water here and uh, bring my waterproof camera and I'm going to give you guys an example of what you should do um, and shouldn't do. Uh, I am at a protected beach and there are no currents, um, but he did say there were some big sharks <laughs> swimming by today. So uh, even I'm a little bit nervous to get in, but it's uh, hot and I need to go cool off. So let's go uh, hit the water and we'll give you guys an example of what you need to do if you find yourself in a rip current. All right guys, so I'm offshore just a little ways here. You can see spraying the camera around, not too far off from the beach here, but uh, you don't have to be to be caught up in a rip current. So they can happen anywhere when it's really wavy. And as I said, the waves are coming in and they hit the shore and then the water's looking for a way to get back out. And that's what happens with the rip current. So you would be out swimming like this. And if you were in a rip current, you would feel yourself getting pulled out getting, you know, increasingly getting pulled out to shore um, or out to the ocean because the current is moving at about eight miles an hour. It's really strong and you're not gonna be able to fight it. So most people, what they will do is start doing this. They'll panic and they'll start swimming, right? I'm trying to swim with one hand. They'll panic and start swimming into shore. That is not what you do, okay? If you find yourself in a rip current, and I know it's gonna be scary because I'm in water that's getting up here already, and the water is pulling you out, right? Further out into the big blue ocean. That's terrifying. What you're supposed to do is try to remain calm, which I know would be hard, and start swimming parallel to the beach. What does that mean? It means there's the beach. Start swimming this way. As I said, north or south. So as the tide's pulling you out, you're going to want to swim this way, okay? And you're still going to be getting pulled out to shore right? Or out to the ocean. I'm sorry, I keep saying shore. You're going to keep getting pulled away from the shore, but you want to keep swimming and eventually you'll swim out of it and you'll end up trying to swim with one hand is difficult, <laughs> but you'll swim this way and eventually you'll get to where you can get out of the current, which is usually a few feet deep. See, this water is already too deep for me to step in. And then you'll find yourself not getting pulled out anymore and you'll be able to get to the shore all right so even that little demonstration there the water got a little bit deeper than i expected and i was swimming again i was swimming with one hand and i'm not the strongest swimmer at all um but i was having a little bit of a difficult time uh so and that was with no current pulling me out right so i can only imagine if i had a current pulling me out how terrifying that would be so like I said, you want to swim parallel to the beach, try to swim out of the current calmly, take your time, don't panic, swim slow, and you know, hopefully the lifeguard will see you, always try to swim at a beach with the lifeguard, if it's not, swim parallel, and just like as slow as it takes you, don't overstress because you're going to wear yourself out, and you can end up, you know, causing yourself to tire out. And then like I said, eventually you will get to where you can swim back to shore, and then you can get out of the water and, uh, well, you can live to tell about it. But, um, you know, sadly, little kids and adults 
uh, like from one of my wife's old, you know, co-workers that she knew, um, had, uh, went to the Bahamas and he lost his life in a rip current. So, a grown man. So, um, so you just want to be careful and, and pay attention to the area that you're swimming in. And again, you know, watch the area that you're going to be swimming and watch for the rip currents and talk to the lifeguards and stuff like that. So, you know, the whole purpose of this video, again, was to let you guys know about things that you need to be cautious about. But still, everyone here is having a great day at the beach, and lots of people have great days at the beach every day. But you do want to be careful and take some precautions to make sure that you can have another good day at the beach. All right, guys, so that's about four or five things that could either ruin your day at the beach or quite possibly ruin your life. I hope you appreciate the information that I was providing to you today. Look, most of these things never happen. All these people that are here at the beach have had a great time today, no incidents, and uh, it goes day, day to day. People go to the beach, they don't have any issues. But things that I spoke about are always in the water. Portuguese man of wars, the jellyfish, you know, those could definitely ruin your day. And as, as I said, some people have died from the Portuguese because they had a bad reaction to it. But really the sharks and the rip currents are the two things that you, I wouldn't say you have to worry about the most. Definitely the rip current. Sharks are very rare. The attacks are very rare. They do happen. You've seen the news. It's tragic when they do happen. But really the rip current is one that you always have to be aware of. Whether you're old or little kids, you need to be aware that there are rip currents. They're always here. And even today, the water was pulling me a little bit. There was no rip currents, but there's always a tide, right? So you just always want to be careful about what you're doing and pay attention to the warning signs and just be cautious. So, all right, guys, well, I appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you take this, this warning. Be careful, and wherever you are in the world, get out and enjoy Paradox. Be sure to watch the videos at the end of this video. You can see more adventures about hitting South Florida and more lifestyle videos about what it's like to live here in Paradise. All right, I'll talk to you next week.